The Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. Hey, Marty, come here. Some pilgrim thinks he found a home. Well, now, don't you think it was time we showed him the error of his ways? Look, now that we've bought it, son. Looks fine. Well, let's go to work. Looks like he's got a rifle. I don't think he'll have it for long. plan to stay. Sure do. We bought the place. My name is McCain. This is my boy, Mark. I'm Sam Montgomery, Mr. McCain. Mine's Billy Lehigh. Howdy, Mark. Howdy. Surprised old man Dunlap finally sold this place. Well, he passed away back east. Judge Hanovan settling matters for years. Seems they were anxious to sell. You have the deed yet? We're getting the next month. Why? Well, we work for the San Saba Cattle Corporation. That's old Chatford's outfit. Maybe you heard of them. As a matter of fact, I have. I thought your grass was in Arizona territory. It is. Arizona, New Mexico, and a good section of Nevada, too. You see, Mr. Jackford had sort of a working arrangement with old man Dunlap. And when Mr. Jackford has an arrangement, it don't change until he says so. And I don't think he's going to say so. See, we've been using this place for winter grazing ground for our new Hereford stock. I think you all just better pack up and uh, hightail it on back to North Fork or wherever you came from and send Mr. Jackford a letter. Well, I appreciate your interest, boys, but I own this land. Legal and proper. Talking legal or keeping legal? <laughs> There's a difference. Possession is what we call the law around here, Mr. McCain. All ten points of it. Now, why don't you just hop in your wagon and move along? Until Mr. Jackford decides different, I'm afraid you're trespassing. You don't seem to realize it, boys, but I am in possession. No, Mr. McCain. We are in possession. Now, do I make myself clear? You're beginning to, Mr. Lehigh. Where do I find Mr. Jackford? Looks like he and I better have a talk. Well, right now he's camped at Grizzly Meadow. But I don't figure that will take kindly to your visit, sir. He don't usually give up nothing unless he has to. And so far, he ain't had to. You don't mind if I give it a try. Stand easy, Mr. McCain. Like your daddy learns the hard way, Mark. Let it be. Walk around it. Come on, boy. Come on, snap it up. Lucky, don't you go worrying about your dad. He's gonna be all right. Susan, calm down, little. Get up now, Mr. McCain. Sorry, I had to fuss with it. Hey, uh, Mr. McCain, what do you get this loop here for? Is to make it easy to... Marty, this thing goes off all by its lonesome. I didn't pull the trigger or nothing. <laughs> Looks like that weapon has your best interest at heart, Mr. McCain. Well, this thing has a little old fandango here that trips the trigger when you slam the lever home. This is mighty cute, Mr. McCain. Yeah. 
cute, but uh, not practical. See what I mean? Mister, I think it's time for you to get in that wagon and pull out. You're going to keep the rifle? Yeah, I think we will. I like it. Are you leaving, Mr. McCain? Or do we have to drag you out? This is our home. We're staying. Billy, I figure there's a lamp full of coal oil on that house. Yeah, I think maybe there is. Now, I want to tell you something about Mr. Jackford that'll save you considerable trouble. Mr. Jackford isn't a bad man. He's just a little narrow-minded when it comes to giving up what he's got. Jackman figures he's his brother's keeper. Sure keeps well. You'll buy the place for me, I'm sure. Right, Billy? Right. And if you're polite, Mr. McCain, you'll end up losing nothing but a little of your time. All right. I understand. We're just a big outfit that don't intend to get smaller. That's the way it is. So long, Mark. Hiya, come on. looking for the right place, and when we finally got it, well, look what happened. Looks to me like the Lord's dead set against us having our own place. Help me saddle up, boy. I want to tell you a story. Oh, come on. A long time ago in a country so far west, it's almost due east of here. I lived a big stockman with a beard so long it reached down to his belly button. His name was Job. Now, Job had seven sons and seven daughters and over 7,000 head of fine cattle and sheep, not to mention a considerable amount of camels. Now, Job was top dog with the Lord because he was so hard working and righteous. And the Lord had never lost a chance to brag on him, made a point of telling the devil about the old man about how he hated evil, fought temptation, and most important, how he never lost his faith in God. Well, the devil switched his tail and laughed. And he allowed that Job was such a good man because everything was going his way. Just give him some trouble and he'd switch sides in a hurry. Well, the Lord thought this over. And then he said he'd give the devil a hog dollar against a penny worth of brimstone, that Job would keep faith with his maker, no matter what trials were put upon him. Well, the devil has set some rustlers onto the old man's stock. And he called up a big wind that knocked down his house and killed all his children. The old man's beard turned white with grief. But he held steadfast. So the devil reared back and saddled them all over with festering boils. Mark, Job was as miserable as a man could be. He got himself a piece of broken jug, sat out in the corral, doctoring his boils and shaking ashes over his head and the whale in his faith, wondering why the Lord had forsaken him until finally three of his friends came up. And they told Job that wailing about the situation only made it worse. And it looked to them like he'd sinned somewhere along the line. And why didn't he repent? Huh. Job jumped right back at them. He said he'd repent when he had something to repent about. He knew he'd been good and righteous. And while he might complain about his lot, He'd not lost faith with the Lord. Oh, that my words were now written and printed in a book, graven with chisel and granite rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand beside me later on. That's how the old man put it. Well, Mark, the devil was plumb wore out, so he just tossed in his chips and quit the game. And the Lord was so proud of Job, 
that he restored all the old man's children and his house and his camels and sheep, and he gave him over twice as many cattle as he had before. And Job lived 140 years, happy as a bird dog, and finally died, being old and full of days. Makes our troubles look kind of piddling, don't it? But I guess if we were to come down with boils, we'd know where to put the blame. <laughs> well, I don't think Jackford can go quite that far, son. I guess we're gonna keep this ranch. Well, I guess we're gonna try. Now, you take the wagon back to town. Tell Judge Havin I'll be there in two or three days. I'd like to stay, Pa. I can bed down over by the spring. You think you can handle a team, make camp? Might get lonesome. Well, pa, I'm ten years old. All right, but you keep your eyes open after dark. Rattlesnakes like to move when the sun's down and the ground's still warm. Paul, oh, are you going against Jackford without your rifle? I don't plan on it. So long, son. Despacio, Monty. Despacio. You're very quick tonight. Como esta, amigo? Bien. Respect the visitor? We had to kick a Nestor off the Dunlap place today. He didn't take it too well. Looked to me like it was the first time he had a taste of dirt. <laughs> what do you do down here, Pablo? Senor Jack will send me on ahead. He's coming down from Grizzly Meadow. 
We pick up the Herefords, make the drive to Amity and ship. Say, is Billy with the herd? Yep. You go sleep now. I'll eat, then I'll go and relieve him. Glad to see you. I'm a little wrung out anyway. Yeah, too much looking over your shoulder, huh? Maybe. That was very funny, Billy. Very funny. Easy, Marty. Come on. Pebble with the kettle? Yeah. Going back to sleep. Take it easy. Come on. Levantes, amigo. Now I sleep and you work. Oh, come on. Hold it. Toss your gun away. Come on. Sit down. Sit to say. Mr. Jackford. Yeah, I found him. Look at him. Scattered. Not a sign of a rider. Maybe the herd got away from him, Mr. Jackford. Maybe. But if those boys went to sleep and let my cattle drift, I'll nail their hides to the wall. Let's go. Jackford. All right, shed your guns and step away. Old man, if you weren't so slow, you'd be wearing a broken wrist. What do you want, mister? My name's McCain, Mr. Jackford. Your two boys tried to push me off my place this morning. I come up to tell you it can't be done. Oh. You bought the Dunlap Ranch. 
I bought it and I plan on keeping it. How much do you want? You can't buy it for money, marbles, or chalk, Mr. Jackford. You're gonna keep your stock, your men, and your dogs off my property till I tell you different. And if I don't, I'll bury him there. You haven't got the chances of a... Maybe I ought to rope and drag you for a while. A mouthful of foxtails might teach you some manners. It taught me. All right, all right. You had your say now. Get on your horse and get out of here. We got another thing to settle. Your boys burnt down my house. You burn the place? It seemed like the thing to do. He's pretty stubborn, Mr. Jackford. I never told you to burn nothing. It wasn't much of a house anyway, sir. They had no call to burn your house. I'll pay you for your loss. But I got plans for that ranch and I aim to keep it. You're gonna have trouble. I cut my teeth on your kind of trouble, son. Now get out of here. Not until you build what you burnt down. You better shoot, boy, if you got Guts enough because it's going to be the last chance you ever get. Now go ahead and shoot. Mr. Jackford, I don't need this rifle to do. Now I'm going to wrap this fancy rifle around a tree. <laughs> Far enough, mister. Well, tell him to shoot. If you got guts enough. You better do it, Jackford. Or I'll be waiting out in the brush every time you step out the door. I'll kill your stock and I'll burn your bonds. I'm gonna pay you back, Mr. Jackford. Now, what's it gonna be? All right. We'll build you a new house. All right, Clyde. Help the boys on their feet. You got yourself a ranch, mister. Whether you keep it or something else. You step out of line. Or you make one mistake and you're finished. I'll be watching and waiting. Waiting for a reason to come after you with a gun, and when I do, I won't be alone. Remember that, Mr. McCain. Right beside the burn. I want all the ashes and trash cleared away before sundown. Yes, sir. Hiya, Mark. Hiya, Billy. Are you going to help us rebuild, son? Good. Like some coffee? See, I think maybe I would. Got a fresh pot going for when you got back. Well, hop aboard. 